Welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Nick Kroger, and today we have a wonderful guest with us, Lauren Benoit, mm -hmm. and uh, she is with the Health and Wellness Pro She's the Health and Wellness Program Manager with the Senior Resource Alliance here in our Central Florida area, and um, has been involved for the past 15 years mm -hmm. uh, working within that industry and, and, and that uh, topic, if yes. you will. But thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you very much for having me here. I am. Um, I, I, we have a great topic today, and mm -hmm. you know, in Central Florida, um, probably in the state itself, our demographic of mature adults mm -hmm. um, has always and probably continues to be a higher number than most. And so, I think this topic is wonderful. Um, yes. We're going to talk a little bit about senior safety mm -hmm. at home uh, with a little bit of focus on, you know, the fall prevention. Mm -hmm. What if we have a senior watching or, or a grown child of a senior mm -hmm. and they're already becoming concerned? What type of fall hazards are there in the home that we might not think of or right. in general? Right. Well, again, falls are one of the leading cause uh, of injuries for older adults 65 and older. And one out of three Americans over the age of 65 will fall. So um, there are many f fall hazards in the home. Um, most people don't think of throw rugs. And I always oh. say just throw the throw rugs away. Right. So you don't need them. They're a tripping hazard. Um, if you have a little neuropathy in your feet or you're not seen too well. Um, I've tripped on a throw rug yes. before. We always tell people to just throw the throw, we throw rugs away. Okay. Um, some of the other things too, if you have a step stool, people say, well, you know, I have things that are up on this top shelf. We always tell people to move things down or my step stool is very sturdy. You're going to do what you want to do, right. but you know, please just be careful. And if you, you know, we have people, I've, I've worked with many people over the years that have moved their pots and pans to a, a different cabinet or they don't have their soup cans up on the top and they right. just don't utilize them anymore because it, they can fall. So people will say, what about throw rugs next to the kitchen, next to the sink? I have worked with, uh, I had one woman that I worked with who had a spill next to her sink and tried to use a paper towel to get down to wipe it up and couldn't get back up for six hours. Wow. So we always say use a mop. Keep yes. a mop in your kitchen, keep a mop in your bathroom, and just leave them around so that if there is a spill, you can just take a mop to, to clean that up. So that, That's practical. You know, the, you, you don't think about those things, but a mop prevents you from having to bend down, yes. and staying upright, which is the goal yes. um, for most of the day. Mm -hmm. um, what would be the most serious, and there's probably many answers for this, mm -hmm. type of fall hazard? Uh, you know, there's many, but uh, I always tell people, take a home assessment. Look around wherever you are right now in your home. Look around, and do you see things? Are there extension cords that are possibly not tucked in? Um, are there um, little chaise lounges that you might have or some ottomans that are out? Or um, is there, uh, you know, again, the throw rugs? Right. Are you wearing flip-flops? Are you wearing slippers? Um, those are also fall hazards. So just to kind of make an assessment of what's around you, or if you're in a chair right now that has, you know, wheels on it, if you fall, that's not going to help you. Right. So we always say to use sturdy, you know, have a sturdy chair around to, you know, make sure you're around something. So there are many, many um, different fall hazards. Um, if you're going to go to a friend's house for dinner or somewhere, ask, do they have small pets? Yes. So, I mean, if, if, they, if there's a cat and the cat doesn't move for you, you might fall over the cat. Absolutely. So it's a bend, being assertive, asking for what you need. You don't want to fall, and sometimes the fear of falling can lead to a fall. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think um, you've mentioned some of the ways to prevent a fall, you know, right. the mop situation, uh, yeah. the throw rugs. Um, are there any other that come to mind that you find have been useful? Um, you know, again, I think uh, the mops are a great idea. You know, again, throwing away the throw rugs, just making sure that you're aware and exercise. And I mean when I say exercise, being become physically active. It doesn't mean you need to join a gym. It doesn't mean you need to, uh, you know, start taking Tai Chi. It just means becoming physically active, which means it could be as simple as when you're making your tea or coffee in the morning that you might do some simple stretches, you know, your hand out in a ball and stretch it out simple things to keep your bones and your joints limber and be able to that you feel a little bit more awake we wake up our minds every yes. morning let's wake up our body <laughs> I, I think that's practical this wonderful yeah. advice um, what if we find ourselves in a situation where a mature adult is at home mm -hmm. and and they take a fall right 
but they don't have access or cannot get to, um, you know, a phone to call 911 or call a family member for help, um, what can they do? Well, I think a couple of things that they can do is first take a second. Take a second and assess where you are. Are you hurt? Because sometimes when people fall, I, I remember years ago a woman fell and I, my first instinct was to get her up right away. Take a second and see, feel, see how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And if you can, scoot yourself, if you can use your hands, scoot yourself over to a wall or a sturdy chair to help you get back up. Um, that's one of the things that they should do. Um, Life Alert is uh, an excellent resource as well. If they have that, you can wear a necklace or you can wear a bracelet. And also, to letting people know that you're, if you are home, if you have a buddy system. Right. I know one woman who lives by herself, and she would call her friend and say, okay, I'm going to go take my shower now, and if you don't hear from me an hour, please call me. And they would do that for each other. They wow. had a buddy, buddy system for each other. But unfortunately, it sometimes happens where people do fall and they are stuck. But it is, you know, trying to, you know, trying to make sure that people know where you are and if you can help yourself, really try to. Again, being physically active will help because you're a little bit more limber. Um, but it, you know, again, watching, you know, making sure that your bed is against the wall on the one side so that you only have the one side to get out is always good. Okay. So you know. That, that's wonderful, and I know too. Um, you know, children of mature adults, um, we've experienced that in my own family. You know, yeah. to have a routine, mm -hmm. you or your brother or, you know, someone is checking in at yes. this time every day. In addition to that buddy system with a friend, which I think is wonderful mm -hmm. and probably people don't think of. Right. Um, because it can be a very scary and sometimes a very fatal situation yes. to have fallen and not being able to get right. help. Now, as the Area Agency on Aging, we have many, many resources working with the contractors that we have that might have the Friendlier Home Visitor Program, right. uh, the Friendly Call Program. So we always suggest and tell people to call our elder hotline, which mm -hmm. is 1-800-96-ELDER. And to call that, and they'll be able to find services and say, hey, you know, I'd love to have someone just call me and just make sure that, you know, how are you doing Excellent. today? There's many, many older adults that live by themselves. Absolutely. So. Um, is there a moment that a, that a, a child mm -hmm. of a mature adult, um, this topic, I'm gonna this topic, you know, is difficult. It's <laughs> difficult, difficult for the for the mature adult. It's difficult for the child of that mm -hmm. adult uh, when we start talking about assisted living or, right. you know, I, I I think that we all try and shy away from our natural instinct. You know, right. you don't want to make that person feel as if the end is near, mm -hmm. and you don't want to make them feel less than they are or disrespect them. Right. But how, in your experience, should a child of a mature adult that there is concern, mm -hmm. and you need to bring up that to topic of assisted living? Well, Any pointers? Well, I think before we talk about assisted living, I think, uh, again, you want to talk to your parent or your, your uh, you know, your aunt, your uncle, and you want to sit down with them and really have an honest conversation. You, a lot of older adults that I've worked with over, over many years are very fearful to talk to their family members about a fall that they may right. have because they instantly think they're going to lose their independence. Absolutely. They're going to lose their home. They're going to lose their car, which is a huge, uh, huge, huge yes. issue, um, and, assist, and perhaps going to assisted living. You you have to have an honest conversation and you have to go about it where, you know what, I, I care about you, I want to make sure that you're safe, let's look around your home, what can we do, talk to the health care provider. I always go back and tell the older adult, talk to your health care provider. And it's not, it's being assertive, it's asking for what you need. We all want to stay independent and live, as ho live, at, live at home right. for as long as we can. And I think that it is, it's very tough. But you don't go in there and talk about, we're going to, about assisted living. <laughs> what can we do, preventative measures that right. we can do to keep you at home longer? And I know in my own mm -hmm. experience, too, my wife broached it as that this is causing me yes. great concern and worry. Mm -hmm. And and it would, it would make me feel better, you know, at least bringing it up that way. Because really no parent, no matter what age, wants mm -hmm. to feel as if they're causing their child undue concern. Right. So I know that that tended to work, you know, in our situation. But um, and you're right, the vehicle thing is a is a Huge. big deal that represents, I you know, that sense of independence. Yes. Um, and it probably has the greater risk of causing the most damage yes. if, in fact, it's time that 
you know, that needs to change. Right. Now, there are some programs out there, again, through our agency where you can find out for people to help with transportation. Yes. There's volunteer programs out there that people will drive you, not just to the doctor's appointments, but to a hairdresser appointment. So there's different options out there. And I think, again, if you have a brother and sister, talk to the, the whole family needs right. to be involved right. in it. And, you know, there are, again, many other adults that don't have the family support system. So where do they go and what do they do? Yeah. And I always say, you know, you call the elder helpline. You find out what services are out there. And you really have, you know, again, an honest conversation with your doctor about how you're feeling. Make sure your medications are, you're taking them properly. Are they promoting, are you getting lightheaded? Are you feeling a little weak right. from them? Make sure that you're taking the proper dosage and talk to your doctor and pharmacist about that as well. And, and I think people have a wrong concept when they hear assisted living. A lot of people immediately think, um, well, back old school, nursing home. Yes. You know, and there are a lot of different versions of mm -hmm. assisted living. I, I, I had a grandparent that she was so much happier. I mean, she, <laughs> she still had her own space. Mm -hmm. she, she cooked for herself, but they, there were community things they did together. Mm -hmm. And she actually, you know... It, in her ending was happier right um, but uh, I think that's important to, to research the information to know what the right because your parent may need this but not this right right and also too there's a cost involved in yes. a lot of those things yes. and a lot of them aren't covered through Medicare so you really do need to find out what's best for you and I always say have the conversation way ahead of time yes and not wait to the last minute and uh, you know I mean you know falls doesn't it, they can be prevented right. but again having the conversation with your family members your friends uh, some of my friends are as close to me as my family right so, me too yeah so I, I think just uh, just opening it up and talking about yeah. it mm -hmm. and just eliminating the fear you're actually yes. doing your parent or your grandparent, you know, um, it's out of love and it, it's a huge favor whether they realize they need it at the moment or not mm -hmm. to, to have talked through that and, yep. and prepare for that. Lauren, I want you to stay with us okay. because we're going to be talking uh, about another great topic that I think we need to, to find out some more information on. And uh, don't go away. We'll be right back after this short break. Simple moments are what make every day count. Welcome back to Join Our Town. I'm your host, Nick Kroger, and as promised, we've kept Lauren Benoit yes. here with us today. She is the Health and Wellness Program Manager for Senior Resource Alliance uh, here in our Central Florida area. And mm -hmm. Lauren, thank you again for being here today. Oh, uh, not a problem. I think it's a great topic. I know, uh, like we talked in the first segment, uh, we have a large population of mature adults yep. or seniors. And um, I know one of the things I see on the news or you hear uh, warnings you know, to your neighborhood or your area of town, seniors and consumer fraud. Oh, yes. And so today I want to, I want to talk a little bit about that. Let's find out more, mm -hmm. and then let's find out ways that uh, we can avoid it. Right. Um, what are some common scams? I know they change, but right. what are some common scams, you know, currently being played on ma mature adults? Right. Well, consumer fraud is over a $40 billion a year business. Oh my goodness. So if you're a criminal, that's the way to get money. Yes. Um, there are a lot of scams. They change all the time. But a lot of things that we see a lot are the lottery scams, either via over the telephone, like, oh, my gosh, you've just won $10 million, but you need to pay $3,000 for fees, or over the Internet, especially the Nigerian lottery. Yes. So people really need to be careful about those. I see that all the time and the many years that I've worked with older adults. I knew one gentleman who lost $500,000 over the phone from some, some person calling them, telling them about an investment in an oil, oil rig in Texas. Never went to go see it, and he was a retired judge. Mm -hmm. It can happen 
to anyone. Right. I think a lot of older adults, again, you come from a time where, you know, a handshake meant right. everything. And that's just not the way that it is. And there's always people that are going to prey on, on anyone. So right. the lottery scams are huge. Uh, also, too, um, you know, hi, Grandma, it's your grandson. I'm calling from jail. I, I need money. Um, that is a big one, too, but they don't say what their name is. And a lot of times it'll be, oh, you know, Junior, how are you? Yes. Um, so that... Again, the, um, if you get a lot of, uh, if you have a friend that has a lot of junk mail, uh, be careful with that. They usually, if they get a lot of junk mail, it means that they've sent money somewhere to somebody. And which, again, you know, con artists will sell that information to right. other con artists. So, again, the lottery scams, the investment frauds over the phone, um, contractor scams. There's contractors that will come to your door yes. and say, I was next door doing the side, you know, doing the, um, the driveway, and I see that yours looks like it needs, you know, to be redone. You know, pay me a thousand dollars and I'll be back tomorrow. Never, ever, ever give money. Right. You know, always make sure, just say, you know what, I, I will call you, or, and then you want to make sure that you check them out. Call the local police department if you have any issues or worries at all. Right, and it's so. good to, to double check. Uh, Always triple double check. check. Yep. And like yep. you said, the one instance with a judge who, in today's society, yep. our first instinct is, oh, he's very smart and, mm -hmm. and, and well educated. And but like you said, it can happen to anyone. It can happen to anyone. If it sounds too good be too, sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And people say, well, you know, why do I keep getting these phone calls, especially at dinner time? Right. What can I do about the telemarketers? They keep calling. They keep calling my cell phone. Our information is out there. It is. I mean, credit card companies sell our yes. information. You might have been in the mall and it, win the free car and just put your information down. Where do you think that goes? Yeah. People sell it. So there is something called the National Do Not Call List that you can get on. It's a registry, and you can find that out through the Federal Trade Commission. But again, with that, it's great, but politicians can still call you, and of course, the criminals are going to keep calling you. So Absolutely. you need to be assertive over the phone. You need to say, put me on the Do Not Call List and don't call again. Do not stay on the phone with these people. And if you have an answer machine, use it. But right. don't ever say, hi, this is Mrs. Jones, and my number is 555-1212. Yes. I'm not home right now. Yes. You've basically told anybody who's calling you your name, your telephone number, and you're not home. Right. <laughs> so please don't do that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Great advice. I know we mentioned it's a $42, $40 billion, $40 billion yes. dollar industry. Over the years, statistically, how many seniors or how many of our mature adults are going to be affected by fraud within this area? Well, you know, I, I think of it, I, what I look at is that there's a lot of older adults, a lot of people that don't ever come forward. Either they, first of all, don't know that they're being victimized or they don't want to tell anybody because they think, again, loss of independence. Um, you know, people might think that I've lost my mind or a lot of these people who are being scammed, the scammers are end up being friends of theirs. You know, after a mm. while, you know, have someone that calls you over the phone and you stay on the phone and you talk to that person, they're your friend now. And so a lot of people, there's, there's really no true number because, again, there's a lot of victims right. that we just don't know about. So right. a lot more than you think of. Absolutely. So. Um, what are some of the telltale signs? I know we mentioned excess mm -hmm. uh, junk mail. Uh, but what are some signs to tell if someone you know your parent, your mature parent, or your grandparent is actually being a victim of consumer fraud. What right. can we look for? Well, again, sometimes you might not know, but again, looking, um, making sure, checking out their mail. Are they getting a lot of, you know, you just won $10 million, or, you know, uh, did they sign away and get some catalogs and they keep getting them over and over and over again? Is their answer machine always full? Are they getting a lot of phone calls? Are they feeling depressed? Are they getting agitated when they talk about money? All of a sudden, um, you know, they don't have money that month or they're, they're just not acting right. It's just to say, you know, check in them. Is everything okay? And sometimes they, you know, again, they might not tell you, um, but it, it, you just have to have the on, honest conversation with them, I think, about it. And, and again, sometimes they don't realize they're even being victims because these people can become friends. And it not only can be consumer fraud from people that they don't know, it could be with people within the family, it could be a caretaker, it could be with someone that they know. So. And you hear you hear about all types. Oh, I yeah. mean, you know, from yeah. caretaker to mm -hmm. to friend, uh, you know, even family members. Right. Um, do you find, I'm, as I'm listening to you, I'm mm -hmm. thinking, you know, we said it can happen to anyone. Yes. Do you think that that mature adult, um, a lot of times, there's hesitation once they realize to share that oh. information with, especially their children, because a feeling foolish, b being looked at like you can't live independently anymore. 
do you encounter that? And, and what would you say to someone, you know, who's maybe in that situation? Right. Um, you know, again, it happens all the time. Uh, again, uh, you're not alone. It happens to a lot of people. You're not foolish. You, you know, you're not... Uh, stupid. Right. I, I don't like to use that no, word. I know, but you're it can right. happen to anyone and to really, again, talk to the local police department. A lot of times, unfortunately, once your money is gone, it's gone. Yeah. You yeah. know, the Ponzi schemes that are out there, I mean, a lot of people lost money to that. It, it just, be careful with your money. Again, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Be careful of who you give it to. You know, your bank is never going to call you and say, someone's trying to get into your account. I need your PIN number. You know, yes. again, and that, you know, that, that plays on people. It's like, oh, my gosh, someone's trying to get in my account. Of course I'm going to give my number. I always tell people, don't carry your Social Security card around with you. Interesting. You should never carry that around. If your pocketbook or your wallet gets stolen, you could be a victim of identity theft. And through the Federal Trade Commission, you can get your credit report, which I, for free, at the three major credit bureaus every year. And you should do that every single year to make sure that someone has an open account in your name, Make sure that, you know, you don't have any fraudulent uh, charges on your accounts. And look at your monthly statements to make sure. It can happen very, very easily. So don't carry that Social Security right. card around with you, please. <laughs> yes, uh, that, I, I never crossed my mind. Yes. You know, you have all of your information with you when you know when you need it and so that makes complete right. sense though. One thing I do want to mention about that, especially with your, with your wallet, Please take a picture, a photocopy right. of all of your credit cards, anything, your medical card, anything you have in your wallet, and make sure you have a copy of the front and the back. If you lost your wallet, do you know what credit cards you have in right. there? Do you know what kind of information you have in there? It's very, very important to keep, you know, take a picture of it, take a copy of it, put it in a safety deposit box somewhere safe in your house so that you know if something happens, you can make sure you quickly call those credit card companies and cancel your credit cards. Absolutely. That's mm -hmm. a wonderful, great advice. Mm -hmm. um, if they find themselves, you know, you said once money's gone, it's gone. They find themselves in a situation where they realize that they've been scammed one type of way or another. Um, what advice would you have to that person? I mean, contact the authorities, contact your family, I'm, because right. any information you give could keep somebody else three right. houses down from experiencing the same right. thing. I think, again, stepping back for a second, assessing the situation, contacting your, your first step is to contact your lo local police department. If you feel that you want to get your family members involved, unfortunately, a lot of people think, oh, oh my gosh, how, you know, how could they fall for that? How right. could they have done right. that? You know, if you want to get your family members involved, you can, but it's education, and that's why we have to educate everyone about it. Um, talk to the local police department. That's your first, your first route, and then contact uh, your state um, attorney general's office as well as the Federal Trade Commission, and you can find all of that information by calling our helpline, yes. our elder helpline at the Area Agency on Aging. Well, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Wealth of information. Everyone should do that as well as mm -hmm. the credit report oh, to fair. double check. You should be doing that every yes. year too. I just did mine. I know. So. <laughs> I, know I triggered in my head. You know, it's yes. time um, because really that's the only way you can tell, that's and right. maybe until sometimes it's too late right. um, that somebody's messing with identity theft even and right. via consumer and, fraud. And if you do have uh, again a lot of children uh, who are two or three years old are victims of identity theft because there's if they all they need is a social security number so these children turn 18 and they want to get a credit card and they can't because they probably already had 10 credit cards on them so now you can actually freeze their account yes you can freeze so I recommend doing that so you know there's a lot of information out there Federal Trade Commission really has a lot but your local police department a lot of them will go out and talk to different groups about consumer fraud that's excellent so, yeah. excellent advice well from a practical standpoint mm -hmm. um, you know, let's say someone watching is, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to really prevent this from happening to me now that they have the information. What are some practical steps that the mature adult or maybe the child uh, uh, of a mature adult can begin putting into place now to, to better, you know, increase the possibility of preventing a consumer fraud happening? 
Well, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword because yes. sometimes you can't prevent right. it. Sometimes it happens and you don't even know, especially with identity theft. Right. There are a lot of times you could go to a restaurant and you give your credit card to a waitress or a waiter, and before you know it, they've skimmed the credit card number, and that's happened to me three times when I lived in Los Angeles. Yes. And so it's a being careful with your cards, um, getting your credit report every year from the three major credit right. bureaus, making sure that you use an answering machine and make sure that you know you say we are not available right. you know please leave a message even if you live alone I always tell women if you live by yourself have a male voice on the answer machine or use the computer for your answer machine and really just be careful check your you know accounts every month check into your credit card accounts don't ever you know look at the car in the in the mall and put your name in there you know because right. they sell that kind of information and if someone calls you and you their telemarketers say please do not call me put me on the do not call list so. that's excellent advice mm -hmm. and um, has consumer fraud in the years that you've been working you know within this sphere mm -hmm. um, does it steadily increase I mean or are we making a dent in no no. We're not making a dent at all. Oh. We, as, no, as education, you can tell someone until they're blue in the face about what they should do. This is what you need to do, and it can still happen. So, again, you have to self-manage your own life, and you have to take what you can get out of it. But consumer fraud, as long as there is people, and as long as there is money, and as long as there's tragedy, tragedy, tragedies out yes. there, um, it's going to happen, you know, especially after hurricanes are calling and saying, right. you know, we have you know, money, or after, unfortunately, the 9-11 incident, yes. there were so many people that were taken by scams. So again, just doing your due diligence and really thinking about it. And if your gut is telling you not to do something, don't do it. And, gen and generally, if you're paying close enough attention, in most cases, mm -hmm. your gut is at least checking you I I briefly. I yes. mean, to give you that instinctual, you know, this doesn't feel right or sound right or look right. Exactly. And then again, involve your family members right. about it. Let somebody know um, because it can keep, you don't want to be coming, uh, uh, keep getting victimized. Right. So. And, and, and being a statistic. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's a great advice. Double check everything. Double check everything. With a family or at least let them know. Help me make this decision. Yep. Because then you've got, you know, two minds yeah. working on the same that's problem. That's right. Exactly. Two together will <laughs> prevent something. Always better than one. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you being here. Oh, thank you it's very much. Been I really appreciate it. a wealth of information, um, uh, and, and especially with the consumer fraud, it's such a yeah. huge thing that has such a ripple effect if mm -hmm. you find yourself to be a victim of it, especially if it leads to identity theft. Oh, yes. And yes. Uh, so I think the information has been valuable. So right. thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. And thank you for being with us today. I hope that you've been encouraged uh, to take the information you've heard today and put some things into place or... Uh, go with your gut. Double check those instincts that we all have if something doesn't sound quite right. And just remember, if we take all the information we have and we work together, we can all spread a little bit of joy in our town. We'll see you again real soon. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telephone dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.